footer. All members are present. Um, first thing is accepting of the minutes. Can I get a motion to accept the minutes of July's meeting? Yeah, we didn't have an August meeting. Oh, that's right, we didn't have an August meeting. August meeting. Mm -hmm. oh. We have a motion to accept. Motion to accept. Second. All those in favor? Mills, yes. Me and yes. Bueller, yes. Okay. Um, first order of business would be. Desert, is, Desert Ray? Don't have any, so then maybe action and discussion. Desiree, is this you? Yes. Vienu? Yes. Yes. Vienu. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, it's permanent makeup, microblading, and I was just risk. leaving it at Desiree. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Easier. More comfy <laughs> Okay, so um, a few months back, um, Desiree contacted the health department. Um, and looking to go into makeovers here in town, mm -hmm. uh, doing microblading. It's um, it's one of the newer things coming out. We do have a couple microbladers licensed in town currently. Um, she does have two years experience? A little over two years. A little yes. over two years experience. Um, and I reviewed the training she had before the two years experience and she's quite adequate to be a microblader in town. So I would recommend that the board approve her permit tonight but we, part of the regulation is that the, each microblader or permanent makeup or body artist come before the board, meet you, have any questions from you, and then you guys can approve if you, if you feel so. So. Okay, you know, it's fairly new to me, so the licensing, everything's in tech, right? She's not licensed yet. First, what we'll have to do is, after you approve tonight, mm -hmm. we'll have to go to makeovers and do an inspection of the, the room, the facility, make sure that, you know, the hand wash facility is there, uh, proper temperatures, soap cleaning, um, places for the sharps, uh, whatever she's using. Um, I've dealt with the owner of makeovers. They already have a, a scheduled pickup from, I believe it's Stericycle to take the sharps on a regular basis. So we do the inspection there, but with your approval tonight, once the inspection is okay there, I, I would approve the establishment and then I would approve her as a permanent makeup artist slash microblade. Got it. So pending inspection. Yes, yeah. correct. Um, the question would be in the event of an allergy, anaphylaxis, something that plant, do you have a plan in place or have you dealt with something? Clients can be allergic to the pigments, red pigments specifically. Yes, so I haven't dealt with anybody um, mm -hmm. in the two years that I've actually been doing it, um, but I do use um, organic um, permanent makeup products, um, which is very good for people that do have allergies. But I also have a big requirement ahead of time that people have like pre-care instructions that I send to people that they need to follow. And if they meet the requirements and they don't have certain skin issues and things like that but if they do then i do tell them ahead of time i don't think that this is and if you were having an event you know what to do call she's one cpr one. certified yes. yes. okay. yeah. so you want to make sure like in event of extreme emergency we have a plan in place. yes That's absolutely it. yes okay i have no questions i wish you luck yes thank and, you, um, <laughs> thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve the permit for desiree to move forward with the rest of the process. Second. Pending the inspection. Yes. <coughs> Second. All those in favor? Mills, yes. Me and yes. You are yes. Okay. So you can contact me and set up a time when we do the inspection in the room and everything else paperwork wise that you have on, on site. Yeah. Perfect. So, All okay. right. Thank Very you. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Have a great Thank day. You. Thank you so much. Next. Betterments. Yes, number one, A, well, number A. <laughs> uh, 11 field crest. Yes, so um, we have three, um, as you can see, um, their system's in failure, but they're good with the town in terms of all their um, taxes and <clears throat> um, that type of thing. And they're looking for 45,000. Uh, George Collins is the engineer, and they haven't selected their installer as of yet. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve 11 field crest. Betterment. Seconded. All those in favor? Me and yes. Me and yes. yes. All right. Next is 68 Beaver Dam Road, okay. which was approved on June 10th of this year, and they are requesting an increase. Yes, yeah, so back uh, June 10th, they uh, were approved for 45,000. 
Um, he's been getting his quotes. It's a big system, pump system. Soils in this person's yard are not very good. Um, so he's looking for an additional 45. Um, I did talk to an installer today, and uh, he's interested in doing the job, and just his portion is um, 68,000. And then there's the engineering and conservation piece. So um, again, he'll only take out a loan for um, invoices submitted to us. Uh -huh. So even though he's approved for 90, hopefully it comes in less, that's all he's gonna get a um, loan for. Okay, um, that's certainly a substantial one, but I will make a motion to approve. Well, so You've looked at this. You you understand. It's the soil, the condition of the soil that's causing all of this. Yes, high ground water. It's very slow perk rate. Um, it's going to be a pump system. Saturated and, soil sandwiched in between two wetlands, which then, in order to keep it, are they going for the presby? Uh, I don't recall off the top of my head. I don't know if they're going to go for So they may imply a different type of technology that would require monitoring, but yes, the plan itself is quite Detailed. sandwiching it in. Yeah. yeah. And there is no alternative. Unfortunately, not on okay. this property, no. That's all I've got to know. Thank you. I'm sorry, Chris, you had a motion? Oh, no, a motion to approve. Seconded. 68 Beaver Dam. Uh, all those in favor? Mills, yes. Me and yes. Hitler, yes. Next one, 145 Foundry. Okay. Um, so another one, uh, it's in failure. George Carl's the engineer. Um, Joe Hurley's going to be doing the installation. And uh, they're in good standing with the town. And so, yeah, with your approval, they would like to move forward. Um, we'll make a motion to approve 145 Foundry Street. Second. All those in favor, Mills, yes. Me and yes. Hitler, yes. Next will be submission of Betterment article. So the Betterment loan program began back in 2012. The first time, um, it, it's a state statute that the town had to adopt, and then um, each borrowing needs to be authorized by town meeting. So in 2012, we went to town meeting for the first time. We asked for $200,000 before we could even get to the next town meeting, that $200,000 was gone, as you, can see, yeah. as you can see. Uh, we are currently at the place where we have put 4.8, almost $8.6 million out there in the community in the form of these loans. Over what time of, What time frame? Since 12? 12. Yeah, okay. since 2012, there is 4.8, almost $6 million. Um, that are actually already out. That's not your pre-approvals. That's actual checks that have gone out the door and loans that have been executed. There's still approvals pending that will continue to eat into that. And we're at the place where we need to go back to town meeting if we want to continue this program, which I assume everybody does, and just ask for authorization for another million dollar borrowing. Last time we did this was in 2021. Um, it's a very simple article. Um, I will submit it and just want everybody to be aware unless there's an objection to submitting it and continuing. I think well, so what do we annually have? What's our annual budget on this? What do we there is no, there it's is no not into the annual budget. So this is a program where as we loan the money out, we mm -hmm. enter into a, if you can think of it kind of along the lines of a home equity loan mm -hmm. between us and the state. So the state pre-approves us, we ask them to pre-approve us or tell them we have authorization for up to a million dollars. They say, yes, Easton, all your paperwork's in order, you're authorized for up to a million. Every time one of these septic systems is completed, Tim executes a call down and asks for that money to be brought down to the town's budget, which is then used to pay the bills. The town pays 2% on those loans and the homeowner pays 4%, 2% to us and 2% to the state. Okay. So it doesn't really cost us much other than you know some administrative fees. There are some legal fees involved with actually at the end of those loans, there's a closing out of the loan that does have some cost associated with it. I think the last one was like $3,200 on a million. 
I was gonna, I think the two percent of what we're talking about for funding, though, we should be right, we're good. Yeah. We're not. No. Nope. <clears throat> and ultimately, we file a lien on the home until so that's satisfied. Right. So, so we're protected. I got you. Yep. The lead, the the letter of the law does say that the loan can transfer with somebody. Um, typically, banks don't like to see that. So it can it go. It's only happened once. Yeah, it can go. House, so, so. Yeah, but up to 20, it's 20 years at 4%, and it just shows up on the individual, the homeowner's um, property tax bill twice a year. Well, I mean, it's a great program. I mean, it's something that, it's good for our residents. It's good for our... It fills an incredible group. need. You're not yeah. going to get a 4% loan anywhere right now, that's for sure. No, not for 20 years with... No. You know, and there's no credit check run. We, it's just whether or not you're in good standing with the town on your bills. And <clears throat> does do you guys pay the installer, or do you pay the homeowner and the homeowner pays the installer? So what happens is the invoices come in to us. Uh -huh. The town issues checks jointly to the homeowner and the contractor. So then Tim meets with the homeowner mm -hmm. who authorizes the checks and actually signs the loan agreement mm -hmm. and then the checks are given to the installer, the engineer, the tree guy, anything that's necessary for the completion of the project. Us, we end up getting cut checks for the application fee, for the um, soil testing fees if they choose to roll that into the loan. So basically this does allow for a homeowner to do this without putting zero dollars on the table. In most cases, Which, I mean, today's economy that's a big plus right now, right? People, right. people are hurt. And, and not, not all contractors decide to work within the program because they're fronting the money on behalf. They don't get their money for like a month after the job's right. complete. So that's tough. Um, all right. So uh, just help me real quick, and I'm I'm certainly in favor of this program. I think it's wonderful. But um, so what's <laughs> the ask going to be at town meeting? Because I think the towns are also looking at over. Uh, uh, operational override as well. So. It's authorization to borrow a hundred thousand okay, dollars from that's the what, state. That's, okay, it's not perfect. not any budget to we we're the pass through yep. for okay. that little bit of legal fee. Okay. Thank you. Like as long as we make that clearer mm -hmm. you know, for the town meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. It historically, other than the first year introducing the program, it has not involved. It's housekeeping. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it basically there's so many people that are affected and benefit from this sure. that. They, it really hasn't caused any, I can't tell you the last time I actually had to get up and speak to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're up to like, what, like 185 of these? It's crazy not to do it. I thought it was closer to 200 yeah. okay. loans. Um, <clears throat> Since we started. But it's a really nice, it's another example where we're going out with an enforcement, but with a solution. Right. So, you know, if they don't have to take advantage of it, but it does crazy help. Not to, but no, I mean, I, I think it's a great program. Certainly people do. Knew they need it. Yeah, we don't have sewage running down driveways for extended periods of time. Or into the neighbor's property mm -hmm. or anything else. So. Mm -hmm. I'm good. All right. Other um, arborvirus update? So just... Do you need a motion to... No, no. I'm just not to okay. do it. Um, uh, a couple of hours ago, we received notice from the state that they have announced the fourth um, human case of Tripoli in the Commonwealth. It's a 50-year-old male in Middlesex County. Risk levels have changed around them. Our risk level has not changed. We remain at low risk for Tripoli. Um, but when you look at the map, our abutters just south. Raynham and Taunton are at moderate, and then right behind them are the high risks of Middleborough, Carver, and Plymouth. So I'm assuming it would be, I would anticipate it being a domino effect. If one of them was to trip any way more positive, we likely would elevate. Um, the only difference if we elevate from low to moderate is the efforts that we put into getting the information out there, public information, public service announcements, um, all that stuff. I think I believe I sent you guys an email last week showing you that Bristol County was um, anticipating that they would just environmentally not be able to do the spraying. Well, it makes sense with the temperatures. Right, correct. correct. I mean, it's just, it's just yeah, going out of the yeah. yeah, I did ask further because in the email um, she had said that if they, if the situation did change, they would consider 
additional efforts. What that means is they would consider taking advantage of the warmer right after sunset, mm -hmm. um, and they would need our help in getting the word out to the community. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when we would probably invoke a reverse 911. Mark's working on putting all yeah. the, the pieces together so we have a go sheet um, and we can get that information out to the community in as many ways as we can anticipate. So just be a switch from morning to evening. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I have staff notes. Um, and the only one I have is, again, a, a new thing today, um, which is a pretty exciting program that um, Easton EMS is starting today, which is a Leave Behind Narcan program. So now when they respond to an overdose, um, they have state-supplied civilian Narcan kits that they will be able to leave with the family members, um, hoping that the person never needs it again, but knowing that if it it's is needed, um, the family does have the tool. It's a zero cost program authorized by the Department of Public Health. So pretty excited about that rolling out. You know, I've said in numerous forums, I think at some point in the not so distant future, we'll see Narcan in regular household um, first aid kits. Yes. There's no reason, there's no harm. It's a shame we didn't do it years ago. That, and I, I don't understand why we don't have activated charcoal. We, we actually don't no, use right. that that much anymore pre hospital. Really? No. Um, I think we still have it, but it's not even in a protocol. Hmm. Not for a trained paramedic, but it could be for the layman to have handy. I, mean, mm. I think for the Narcan, just the seizures. You worry about seizures, and then the half life of it is really short, and the half life of opioids is really long. Mm. So, I think the concern is you give Narcan, you think you're good, and then 20 30 minutes back. later, it's, back, no. so it kind of I think the reason why they just don't have it without a mm. prescription is but the teaching and education isn't even in your prescription for it unless someone's doing it. But it's yeah, just this the, will have an education piece. Yeah. And um, the way the protocol is written is obviously patient care is primary. Yeah. Um, and because of our setup with our community paramedicine program and our mental health liaisons yeah, and great. whatnot, that if there isn't the opportunity to have the conversation effectively yeah. with the family, there'll be a revisit. Yeah. Um, but we will have it available to That's be great. given out in those circumstances. Yeah, just, but it is good because it's, it's one of those things. If you if it happens once, the the recidivism rate is high. Mm -hmm. Having it happen again. Yep. I just got the email about it. Well, okay. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is not a bad thing. Not this. a bad thing at all. Like I said, late, but yeah, better late than that, never. Um, I'm a prescriber, and when I prescribe, more and more corporate pharmacy companies. Are requiring it's like their 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 rule if I prescribe an opioid to a patient I have to also prescribe Narcan before oh. it was like you could pick it up and I think it did not pass a mass state legislature I'm not quite sure because it was it was on the table and it didn't pass but the individual companies can make a requirement so I've gotten more callbacks saying you need to we can't Pres fill this till you call. Yeah, them. and it is, mm -hmm. the patient doesn't have to pick it up because the thing is, you don't want it to be a cost burden. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's happening more frequently. Mm -hmm. It should just be not getting an epi pen, should be in every different way yeah. the case. <clears throat> but that's just me. <laughs> in my car, I have them, so yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just drive around. <laughs> if I see anything like. <laughs> Any other staff notes? No. Member notes? The only thing I have, and I know I talked about it before, I think we're going to dodge a bullet on the mosquitoes this year, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced that there's not more we can do as a town or as a collaborative effort with surrounding towns to combat these mosquitoes. I know we talked about the railroad tracks. We talked about the standing water. Yeah. That's a missed opportunity, and I think collectively, we can come up with more than just that as well. I understand that the spraying is the issue with the licensing and all the wonderful things that go with it. I, I kind of get that, but I'm just unsettled thinking that we're not 
turning over every stone. There's got to be something else we can do because this Triple E has been a threat every August. This board has talked about it long before I got on the board. Right? You guys have had to deal with it. You're doing the education piece. You're, you're in contact with the state and our partners with the county and all that stuff. I think it is such a serious threat. This thing isn't going away. Mosquitoes are not going away. Ticks are not going away. I just, and I'm not saying there is a solution. I'm saying that I would like to see the board collectively come up with some ideas and then see how feasible they are or what, what more can we do so that next August we're not down here talking about shutting down the athletic fields or you know some five-year-old kids got Triple E or something like that. That would bother me a great deal. I'm just not convinced. And, and you know, I've been wrong before. I like to. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But if there's something else we can do for the town, I'd be in favor of that. That's all I have today. No, I've just had a couple questions from different constituents through a couple different town people about where to access free COVID testing. Um, I gave them some updates uh, and things like that. Have, Council like, on aging. Free, free tests or to have to, to get To have tested. free tests, like to get the free tests. That we, they used to be everywhere and yeah. now they're just I not. Think, um, they're in a lot of, you can, I, I <clears throat> recommended contacting your insurance agent because they get free tests through, so pharmacies, things like that. Um, um, I know we had some at We the, just got some this week. Yeah, last I know week. we had yeah. some. So I said, you can contact this office. And then I know they were at the Frothingham building. Yep. Um, that people can go yep. there. Fire station. Fire station, too. Yep. They just so, got put in today. Um, yep. I just gave them to Ellen this morning. Yeah, just, so there we go. So, yeah. So it was just questions about when they get, when the town um, officials get asked, you know, where we need to go. So, yeah. Okay. Definitely yeah, really appropriately <laughs> reach out to us and said to reach out to you. Yep. And your team yep. gave you as a contact. Um, we somehow got an email that now has me having the ability to order them. Yeah, okay. From <laughs> but they're very short lived. Yeah. The ones that we got like Thanksgiving is cut off. Yeah, yeah. they're before Thanksgiving. Okay. There's the box we got. Friday, Thursday or Friday, we got 250 kits. Great. It's not, you know, cases yeah. and cases like we were getting. I mean, just people are like, it, it, anticipating fall and winter, and I think there's just more interest now. Yep. Um, they're out in the, um, we have our own little shop set up upstairs with Great. tick pickers and yep. bug wipes and the COVID and kits. Frothingham has a supply as yeah. well. Um, the community paramedicine has a program. Um, okay. We're going to be distributing some. We've been in touch with the schools, so the school nurses hopefully will have some okay. shortly. Because that was what I was. I know we used to, mm -hmm. and when it was more of a hot button issue and more prevalent. Um, but that was just an question. Yep. Um, but they are coming in smaller batches, yeah. partly because they're coming with the caveat that they expire usually. Yeah. In about sixty days. Okay. So they're cleaning out the national stockpile. That's basically well, what's going on. So and I encourage them to always contact us off. Yep. Because wealth of knowledge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we've got them. Is there an uptick in cases? Are we seeing or are we level? I mean. It's not really anything that is being tracked significantly right now. The only places it's actually kind of counted and watched is in the community habitats where um, you have a lot of the at-risk people. Personal, my mother-in-law is in Franklin at a 55 and older that has community dining. It went through there. Mm -hmm. um, great We've Aunt seen May. a lot of work. Yeah, Aunt May is over in Mansfield at the Willows. Um, they're seeing, I'm getting emails every couple of days. So they're, I think, I think that actual dining piece together is a big, big factor. And we saw it very early on that when the restrictions started being lifted and people would go out to dinner, five and six couples, everybody around the table would end up with COVID before the week was out. Mm -hmm. kind of biased because we're kind of hospital so we we just see it all the time so yeah <laughs> but it's not any worse than it usually is um but yeah but no it's I, it, just a bad cold just now. respiratory stuff increase yeah. as people move indoors <laughs> it's just kind of this you know, natural cycle of everything yeah mm -hmm. and it's just being you know tested for and treated and screened and triaged like 
they would for flu. Um, yep. You know, pretty much anybody that goes in with respiratory symptoms is going to get tested for the panel. And then this fall, just pushing, getting flu and COVID vaccines if you can. If you want. Yep. All right. Um, almost made the 30 minute mark. <laughs> Motion to adjourn at 625. Second. All those in favor? Those yes. Bien, yes. Yes. All right. Good job, team. Next, yeah. Next meeting is October.